I've shown this before. This is my Duracell battery pack. Uh, it's a neat little thing. It's, it's really meant to be just an extra. And once I get my full solar system in my Class B, that's what this will be. But currently I use it and it works pretty well. But it has three 120 volt sockets, has a uh, 12 volt socket, jumps the car, all that good stuff. It has 480 watts of power to it. So it's important to know, you know, the things you want to operate when you're testing to see how much power they draw. Well, what's your limit? Where can you go up to? So there are obviously going to be things that won't work on this. But testing all your appliances that you may want to use is a good thing to do to know where you're at and how much power you can draw. Once the bigger battery system is in place in my RV, I'll be good to go. But 480 is adequate for running a lot of things. Your uses are always going to be different, so it's good to know what your system can handle as you check these devices. Um, I know when we're all out RVing, we're, we're so worried about power, 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 how much power does things use. So I'm going to do a quick little thing of all the things I can think of. I'm going to do simple stuff like uh, blenders, coffee pots, skillets, TVs, you know, the things I have around that I also use when I'm RVing and just see, well, how much power do they use so that you and I both know. What I have here is one of those handy dandy little voltage, you know, you plug it into the wall and that tells you how much power is using. Wave Mini. And there I have leftovers, which is awesome. I should make a cooking show on how to teach how to use it. That's zucchini stuffed with uh, hot sausage and hamburger and onions and all kinds of good stuff. One of these days I'll make that. And it's plugged in, pulling 0.8 watts, and all it is is on. Nothing's happening. So I'm going to do cook time. This just needs about three minutes. And I'm going to start, and let's see how much power it starts using. It jumped way up there. So that's using about 750 watts. After the first minute, it seemed to drop down to 723, 24. And that's quite a bit. So, you know, you need a pretty good uh, inverter in order to make that work off your, off your battery system. Next, the little clip-in fan that I use. You can see there's no power. There's the plug. There's the fan. Plug it in. This is a Hamilton Beach brew station. You just push the cup to it. I would assume they're all a tiny bit different, but relatively close. There's the meter. There's the plug. Plugged in. Now I'm going to turn it on. It's using 1.4 watts until let's see what it does when it starts brewing. You can see it climbing. To me, that's a lot of power. I'll let it go for a while and we'll see if it, where it might end up. Still a lot, dropping a little bit. Looks like it's leveled out at 892.3. It's using 58.8 to keep it warm because it's done brewing. So that's what this Hamilton Beach brew station, that's the power it uses to make a pot of coffee. Check the computer now. I've got it unplugged. And the battery's saying that it's 71% charged. So you know that it's unplugged. Again, this is just a cheap Dell laptop. And when charging it, you can see it's using about 49 watts to charge it. Let's check out how much power it takes to charge your DeWalt or similar type. Let's see. When you're charging things like this, it's usually slow charge to get the battery full. Check out the induction cooktop from New Wave. This is one of my favorite things plus I'm hungry
So let's have dinner. Alright, power came on. That's a watt just to turn it on. We'll put it on low. Start it. Low jumps up. And these things start and stop a little bit so the power jumps around a little bit. As you can see. And we'll jump it up to medium low. Medium is 275, just under 800 watts, jumping up to medium high. So you might be close on a 1000 watt inverter off your battery system to run this on medium high. Just go up to high, which is high is 425. Max Sear. Sear just says Sear, it doesn't tell you how hot it is. So, this, if you were to check your uh, electric stove top, it'd be using a lot more power than you. If you have a decent battery system, an inverter, you can run a, you can run this cooktop while you're RVing. If you're out of propane or choose not to use propane, I'm gonna turn the vacuum cleaner on. Pretty stable at about 1170. So that's a vacuum cleaner. Just uh, what the heck is it? Abyssal. The Bissell Power Force Helix Turbo. Woo! Daniel Microwave. Landlord had it. It's drawing 1.8 watts. We'll put. I just got a glass of water in there. We'll do a minute. 223. Woo! This is why you should all realize that usually your generator won't power your AC and the microwave. One or the other. All right, that's a lot. Let's check out a toaster. Everybody uses a toaster. So, you know when you're in your RV, how much energy it'll take you to make some uh, Pop-Tarts. See how much it takes to charge up. You can see it needs some charge. My uh, Samsung Stratosphere phone. 4.7 watts. Just for giggles, this is my fake cigarette. I need to get off this thing anyways, but let's see how much it takes. That takes about two watts, jumping back between two and a one and a half. Only a tiny bit of power for a bad habit, but still better than real ones. A TV, VCR, and direct TV box. Got power strip, so when I turn the power strip, it, it draws 0.5 watts, half a watt. So when it's playing, because it's playing right now, but I don't have the TV plugged in, it stays at about 3.7 watts. Now, some of the older big tubes, you know how people don't like to wait for the TV to warm up? Well, now when you turn your TV on, it goes on right away. It's because it's sucking down a lot of power. To keep. So three and a half watts to run a DVD player. 28 and a half watts to run the LED TV. So the TV is running at 25 watts. It's pretty good. I'm going to add the Direct TV box, plug that in. So you can see, Direct TV box doesn't take very much at all. I'm going to unplug the other things. First, I'm going to unplug the TV. It's like a whole entertainment system the TV, DVD player, and Direct TV box all on and it's under 37 watts. And that drops it down to 11.6. I think I got a problem with this camera. I think it got wet. 11.6 again is the direct TV box and the DVD player. Now I'm gonna unplug the DVD player. And the direct TV box is the only thing plugged in. 
and it's pulling about 8.1, about 8 watts, because remember, I'm using a half a watt just to do the power strip. So that's not a lot of power consumption. For those, those are three common devices that you'll use in your RV when you're out enjoying nature and while enjoying nature watching TV and remaining plugged into this world many of us have to be plugged into. Here's something that can actually be useful when you're RVing, a small crock pot. Um, this is like the small small one. And turn it to low. And then 21 watts. Turn it up to high. 192. Good use of a little bit of electricity if you want to put something in a crock pot. Another little gadget, a can opener. Again, don't know where it came from. I need a yard sale. Don't know why you want to take a can opener with you, but if you do. Sometimes when people go RVing, they might want to take a small printer with them. Not sure if I will because I have a small Class B. This is a Lexmark uh, 4550. It's plugged in but not powered on. Now I'll power it on. Alright, using a little bit of power to get itself ready. Again, it's important to know how much power things will use before you go. And, and sometimes too, it's good to know what things peak at because oftentimes that will determine what size inverter you need. So this is sticking at 8.8 .8 watts, not doing anything. And it should be starting. And you can see while it's printing, it's using about 17-ish watts of power. Here's a little thing I picked up at the thrift store actually. I got this for three bucks. My situation, if you see my videos, I have a 99 Leisure Travel Van, and in that, it has a cassette deck in it. I have the adapter, and this thing has an earphone jack, so I could play this through my current system without spending hundreds of dollars swapping out to a CD player. Because I kind of like having the tape deck, and all my other things, my XM and all that, will work off the cassette adapter. It's really lightweight and I can either run it off my Duracell battery pack or a small inverter that you plug into your cigarette lighter. But let's see how much power this uses. That's the radio. It's using 0.7 watts. Two watts is really low on the power consumption. I think I made a good deal for three bucks, and it's so lightweight. It's good to know how little power things can use. I really doubt people are using these very often when they RV, but I had one laying around, and let's see how much power it uses. That's on high. That's on low. That would sure do damage to your RV battery. Figured I'd add this for pet owners that are RVing as well. This little handheld can come in handy because sadly our four-legged friends get sick sometimes. Let's see how much power it uses. It'll be loud. Okay, just in case you want to take one for your four-legged friend and keep in your place. So I've been kicking around the idea of trying to squeeze this little mini fridge into my class B. Um, I did the measurements. It'd be really close if I can get past the molding in that, that big closet I have. But let's check to see how much power this uses. Okay, powered it up. First time it's been powered up in a while. There's a little bitty George Foreman grill, the tiny one. I don't remember the last time I've used that. So there's the George Foreman. 737 is pretty standard sticking right there. And you can see that it's on. Little waffle maker. Don't even know where it came from. I uh, could guarantee you that I've never used it. 
but I have one. Let's plug it in. And the light is on. It's heating up. That's another 720-ish watts. Hey, this waffle maker I have works. It's hot. Here is here's a little sandwich maker. Had this forever. Can't remember the last time I've used it. See how much power it takes. Power's on. And hey, it works. It's getting hot. Wonder what I'm gonna do with all these things.